part two. We're transported back to normalcy. Normalcy, I guess, if that's a, using that properly. Um, with regards to uh, Winston back at work, things are normal, so on and so forth. However, he sees the dark haired girl again. Okay. She trips, he instinctively reaches down to help her up, and in doing so, he, she slips him a note. Have, you've all seen this in the movie, right? How long's the wait? Oh, it's about two hours. Oh, really? Here, maybe see what we can do about that, okay? You know what I mean? Grease in the palm, helping him out. Just kind of slips him a little note. He takes it, puts it in his pocket. He's petrified. Petrified to look at it. What could it say? So many things. I know you. I saw you. I'm going to turn you in. You better kill yourself now. It could be so many things. Not the three words that you see on the next page. Or actually the next page after that. On 108. The three words. And these completely caught me off guard the first time I read this book. Now, I'm not so surprised anymore. Go through this a couple dozen times and so on. But I love you. Huh? She loves him. Have they had conversations? No. Have they had prolonged eye contacts? Uh, when they lock eyes, they usually go the other way. She's kind of a stalker to him. From what we see. Now with Winston, he fantasizes about her. He lusts and longs after her and towards her and in her area. But he's not following her around. So there is some, some uh, interest going both ways for these individuals. Um, it took him a while to get up the nerve to, to talk to her, to figure it out, to reciprocate. Not necessarily, I love you back, but to have a conversation because, remember, the party doesn't want promiscuity or affection between two people. And so they have to covertly figure things out. And he worries that, you know, above all, that I'm taking too long. She's going to change her mind. This hot little thing that I've had a thing for, she's going to change her mind. I've got to figure out a way to get in the near vicinity. You know, we, maybe I'll sit with her at lunch. Oh, well, that didn't quite work out the way we wanted it to. But ultimately, ultimately, that if you jump to... Well, 114 and 15, where we did our write-up. They find and make their way out to Victory Square. Remember the term victory, victory gin, victory cigarettes, victory square? Okay, that whole propaganda machine that's going on. And there is a parade of POWs going by. So the enemies. So in this instance, it's the Eurasians being carted by. And everybody you can imagine, big brother this, big brother that, Eurasia, you're this, you're that. And it's like a big mosh pit. And they're so close together, like this, that they can talk without really moving their arms. Yeah, they can still do this so they can talk and without drawing attention. Because you see how I'm not really moving my lips too much? But yet I can convey with her and converse with her as to what we need to do. And there's so much noise. You don't have to worry about telescreens picking them up. Okay? They figure out, she gives them some direction, they figure out a place to meet up. And that's what happens in chapter 2. Um, they can't write anything down, all these things, so she tells it to him. He goes, yeah, I can make it there. Yeah, I know that. Uh-huh. And so they say, okay, well, get away from me. And so they're expecting to break apart and move, but you're stuck in the middle of a mosh pit. You ain't going nowhere. So they're stuck. What does she do while they stand there and wait? Did you pick up on it? It was very... Sh she went and held his hand. Imagine standing next to each other and just, I mean, it's probably nothing more than maybe a touch. Maybe this. Right? But that first time you hold hands with somebody that you like, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, that's a big deal. That connection, that, that bond is starting. And so they held hands like that for whatever, I don't even know if I told you, for not long. And then they went their own way. And then they met up in chapter 2. Okay? Um, chapter 2. Part 2, chapter 2. He makes his way out to the country. The trains, the streets, walking around. Even out in the country, 
Even if you don't find some telescreens mounted on walls, there's still the possibility of being spied on. Okay? Um, you remember The Incredibles, right? When they land on that island, on Syndrome's Island, and the kids are running out by themselves like, oh, look at that birdie. Well, the birdie is what? It turns out to be an alarm. Its head pops up and it just starts squawking and squeaking and then all these cameras come on and you know, and focus on the kids and that's how we find out that, you know, the bad guy finds out that, you know, Dash and Violet are there. Um, so anyways, um, you never know. You never know with these, uh, with, with the country, how you are truly safe or, you know, the best you can do is hope, I guess, and be overly cautious and protective. And they do that and they eventually uh, do meet up uh, with each other. Um, page 120. We find out a lot about this girl. Do we find out her name yet? It's on 122. We find out her name's Julia. Okay, the dark-haired girl's name is Julia. So we have Winston and Julia. Um, Winston is very honest right on 120. I'm 39. I've got a wife that I can't get rid of. I've got varicose veins and I've got five false teeth. I could care less. She doesn't care. Doesn't care. The next moment, she's in his arms. This young thing, and he's an older guy, and just, she's so beautiful and everything's great, and things just aren't really clicking for him. It's a little too much too soon. If you kind of see where we're going with this in a, in a nice way, school appropriate way, okay? Things just aren't working at this particular time. Um, and so she goes, that's all right, we have time. So they sit around and talk, okay? They sit around and talk for a little bit. Never mind, dear, there's no hurry. You know what? He said, I hated you. I hated the sight of you. I wanted to rape you and then murder you afterwards. I was going to bash in your head. I was going to get you. And she thought that that was funny. The girl laughed delightedly. <laughs> and she goes, why? And they discuss. Well, it's, she goes, it's this thing, isn't it? And it's that sash. Remember that uh, the junior anti-sex league sash that she wears? And he talks about in here that it just nicely shapes her curves and accentuates her curves. She goes, it's this thing. She goes, that's my cover. I go to the Two Minutes Hates, I'm in this anti-sex league, this is on my cover so that I can go and do these things. Because when they finally get it going and get it on, he says, how many times have you done this before? Hundreds. <laughs> Hundreds. What? Remember, he just wanted one time in his life, and he's, he's getting it, but he wanted one time in his life that could be just desire and this, this rebellious act. And she's done this thing a hundred, hundreds of times. And so on. Um, he told her, I thought you were a thought police. And she goes, no, 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 no. Um, I play the games. I play the games so that I can have my little fun off on the side without drawing focus. Okay? You've all seen that before. Criminals have a double life, right? Um, the TV show Breaking Bad. If anybody's watching that. No? Yes? One of the head drug dealers in there is a, uh, in charge of a chicken uh, like a KFC type franchise. That's his cover. Extremely good cover. He donates to the police. He donates to hospitals. He's on board of directors in all of these areas. You think that's a good cover? Make good friends with the cops and somebody, if they ever say, I think that guy's dirty. He donates to our fundraisers. What are you talking about? That's a great cover. Okay, so her cover, oh yeah, she's promiscuous. She's one of the main people of the Junior Anti-Sex League. She is not sleeping around. Okay, so that's playing the games um, that she's talking about. Um, page 122 is something very interesting. He says, you are very young. He said, you are 10 or 15 years younger than I am. What could you see to attract you in a man like me? They both know why he's attracted to her. She's young and very attractive. But he knows I'm really not a catch. Why are you attracted to me? Why did you say you love me before we even talked or spoke at all? She goes, it was something in your face. I thought I'd take a chance. I'm good at spotting people who don't belong. As soon as I saw you, I knew you were against them. That's a very telling statement. If I'm Winston in this world of paranoia, she just said, I could tell from looking at you that you don't belong, that you're against them. Would that make him feel good or more paranoid? I would think way more apparent. If she noticed it, who else? I'm thinking I'm doing a good job. But she said, first glance, she knew that I'm against them. 
What would these other people, what would Big Brother and everybody else? Anybody else. Sime, Parsons, Mr. Charrington, O'Brien, Big Brother himself. Maybe it's easy for the Rebellion and Goldstein to find him in the long run. Maybe it's a big sign on his face that says, hey, I'm not with the party, but I am, so I'm not. Back and forth. Um, but that's very, very interesting. Uh, he talks about the golden country, his dream. She rips off her clothes and chucks them aside just like her dream. And what do you mean the gold country? Oh, it's part of my dream. So we see him, I don't know if it's he's psychic or what. But this, his mental images are happening, and they're turning out like he thought. Um, so keep that in mind with regards to, well, if those dreams are coming true, it's like Macbeth, right? If those prophecies come true, well, then maybe these prophecies will come true, that type of thing. So keep an eye on that. Um, page 125. When she says that she's been with a, well, you know, she's had sex hundreds of times, well, scores of times anyway, with party members, yes, always party members, because that's the rule of the party is no two members are, are, if you need to, you know, you need to go and have sex, you go do it with a prostitute or some proles. Two, you know, two party members are not supposed to get together. That's not how it happens. But yes, all of them have been within party members, have been with party members, with members of the inner party. Not with those swine, no. But there's plenty that would if they, ha if they got half a chance. They're not so holy as they make out. Pay attention to his reaction. His heart leapt out. Scores of times she had done it. He wished it had been hundreds, thousands. Anything that hinted at corruption always filled him with a wild hope. Listen, the more men you've had, the more I love you. Do you understand that? Yes, perfectly. I hate purity. I hate goodness. Because if she's had sex with a thousand different party members, that means a thousand different party members are not as goody-goody as what Big Brother is saying the party members are. So Winston is not necessarily as alone. You see how that's a positive? Okay? Because in a relationship in our society, you typically don't want your partner to be that, have that kind of a record. Typically. That's why it's so what in here. Okay. Um, so it's, very, it's a very interesting moment and very telling moment in their relationship that they are both going uh, for the corruption and, and for the, um, you know, this is their way of getting back at Big Brother and so on. And the last page on page 126. Um, and at the end of that, that, that was above all what he wanted to hear. Not merely the love of one person, but the animal instinct. The simple, undifferentiated desire that was the force that would tear the party to pieces. And at the end, in the old days, he thought a man looked at a girl's body and saw that it was desirable. And that was the end of the story. But you could not have pure love or pure lust nowadays. No emotion was pure because everything was mixed up with fear and hatred. Their embrace had been a battle, the climax of victory. It was a blow struck against the party. It was a political act. Remember, he was talking about he wants that moment of desire because that's thought crime. He wants those moments because it is an act of rebellion. And that's the only safe one that he kind of has at this moment. When he was uh, having um, relations with her, you know, she was so open and loving and touching and they got into it completely opposite of his time with his wife. Do you remember the description? Her eyes were closed and you know she was just going through the motions I guess you could say. Um, that's her duty for the party it said. Julia is not doing this for the party. She's doing it for herself. Does that make sense? Okay. So um, part two uh, part one was the exposition, the setup of Winston, a big brother of how everything goes, the paranoia, the establishment of all that. Part two deals with Winston and Julia, their relationship that's budding. Okay, they're going to have to be very careful, those of you that have read ahead. They need to pick their times and moments they get together very, very carefully. Okay.